I think you only have one more day to get into the Corporate Citizen Playbook at the current price before the price goes up, where we teach you how to set up a holding company, how to set up an operating company, and more importantly, how to set up a business and start making money. So the link is below in the description box or in the first comment. You wanna go ahead and make those moves. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Warren Buffett in 2022 was sitting on $130 billion in cash. Warren Buffett's complete net worth is 111 million. So Warren Buffett has literally sitting on his complete and then some net worth in cash if he wanted to do that. Now, there's another person, Grant Cardone. You may have heard of him. Grant Cardone says some of the most ridiculous things. I think that's his style where you shouldn't save any cash. You shouldn't save any cash. You should go ahead, take your cash and invest it. You should never, never, never put cash in the bank. You shouldn't always have your cash out here working and working and working. Warren Buffett's cash, because I can tell you, he doesn't have it sitting in a regular bank account. He has it sitting in a high yield savings account. Warren Buffett's cash makes more money than all of Grant, and, Grant Cardone's enterprises. So let's go ahead and take these two individuals. Warren Buffett sitting on a bunch of cash and Grant Cardone, who says, you should not sit on cash. You should, you should never save up cash. You should always deploy it, deploy it. And this is one of the things that kind of irks me because I'm one of those people who's sitting on a lot of cash. And let me go ahead and go into the framework of someone who's sitting on cash. Like, is it true that inflation is destroying the value of my cash? Absolutely. But here's the thing. Now remember years and years ago, I used to, when I was stupid, I used to put up my ATM receipts. I used to put up screenshots in my bank account and people were like, that's just too much cash, you know? And then I would like, that's just too much cash just to have in the bank account, right? And I was like, how much cash do you have? What's your personal net worth? And they never would tell me. You wanna know why they wouldn't tell me? because they were ashamed because their net worth wasn't much of nothing. And one of the things that I've noticed is people, and Grant Cardone is very wealthy. He's very wealthy. He's nowhere near as wealthy as Warren Buffett, but that's part of his salesmanship, I believe. He puts these things out, he says these things. So Warren Buffett is an old man. He's like 92 years old. So he's been through a lot of good times and bad times, and he knows the value of cash. Once again, cash sitting in the bank is not earning, you know, unless you have it in a high yield savings account or you have it in CDs, you can make a little money, right? And one of the things that I see is poor people listening to people like Grant Cardone and completely ignoring Warren Buffett. One of the things, like for me, I'm, I'm a very, very sketchy with cash, meaning that before I spend a chunk of cash, I gotta be really sure where that money's going or I'll just hold on to it. And one of the reasons that I'm able to hold on to it, even though it is losing value due to inflation, is I have a financial device. Now what's a financial device? I have a way to make money very, very fast. So yeah, my money's sitting in the bank. Yep, inflation's gonna lose it. 30 years in the future, the money that's in the bank is not going to be worth what it is today. So one of the things that you have to understand when you have a financial device, what is a financial device? Let me break that down to you. A financial device is a business or investment that yields you a lot of money very, very quickly. When my financial advice device was at optimum levels, I was doing like $350,000 per month. So when you have money coming in that fast, 
you're not really worried about inflation. Now, once again, this is something that I see so many poor people get caught up. And this is something, I'm not trying to be dismissive, I'm not trying to be overly critical, but here's the issue that you guys face. If you're a poor person, and let's go ahead and break that down, what is a poor person? You work, you make $40,000 a year or less. You do not have enough money to invest in anything. See, th this is where, and this is like literally 80% of the country. Now, how do I know that 80% of the country makes less than $40,000 a year? I went ahead to the Google machine and I looked up jobs. We have 160 million people working. We have a population of 330, which means that almost half the population isn't working. You wanna know why? Because they're children, their wives, and they're old people. That's one of the things you need to know. So I, I, I've done the math. So I know what the average American is making. And at $40,000 a year, you do not have enough money to become a significant investor in anything. Housing, uh, stock market, gold, silver, cryptocurrency, you don't have enough money to really do anything. Because, you know, years and years ago, I put out a lot of content talking about why the average person should not involve themselves in cryptocurrency. And I, I was like, well, I made money, I made money. And the folks who would tell me they had a thousand, they turned it into 20. Let me go ahead and tell you something that happened with my financial device. In 2000, nine i invested let's just go ahead and say because it's so long ago and i don't remember, but let's go ahead and say i invested five thousand dollars 2009 2010 five thousand dollars and that five thousand dollars went on to make me millions without any more investments please show me your cryptocurrency please show me your housing Please show me whatever investment that you have where you could turn $5,000 into millions. Please show me that. Because this is one of the things, and this is why Warren Buffett is much richer than Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is 62, 64 years old. So Warren Buffett had like a 30 year head start, but Warren Buffett plays a different game than Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone, he has these businesses, he has his 10X conference, and he uses that money, he throws in the real estate, and he's pretty wealthy. And this is one of the things that I find to be very interesting with Grant Cardone. He keeps referring to himself as a billionaire, or people keep calling him a billionaire. Grant Cardone is not a billionaire. He's not even close. Uh, I would say estimates Grant Cardone's personal net worth not the net worth of properties that he controls because all these properties that he controls have loans on them. So he doesn't own them outright and he owns them in conjunction with partners. So I would say Grant Cardone's net worth is probably $500 million, which is very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. But he's not a billionaire. And so people look at Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett is not an investor. He's a businessman. And once again, please put in the comments, how many of you can go out and buy Geico? Geico, buy a complete company that's making money. How many of you can do that? Because, you know, it's like people like to throw around these fancy terms. I'm an investor, I'm an investor, I'm an investor. When, yeah, you know you got $1,000 and you threw it in the stock market, technically you are an investor but you're not an investor of means, you're not a significant investor like Warren Buffett or Carl Icahn or Stanley Davenport. You're, you're just not like these guys because these guys literally throw millions, tens and sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars into their investments. And this is where the average person gets screwed because one of the things that you consistently see on the internet is, I'm gonna call them 
fantastical financial shortcut schemes that you, the average person, can go ahead and get into this scheme and make a lot of money with little to minimum effort. And once again, this is one of the things that I preach. I personally feel that everyone needs to have some cash in the bank. What, what is that? Long-term emergency fund, short-term emergency fund, family operating account. Your long-term emergency fund will be a year of your salary in the bank in cash. Your short-term emergency fund will be $5,000 in cash to protect your long-term emergency fund. And your family operating account is two months of living expenses in the checking account so you can pay your bills when your bills come in versus waiting to get paid. Now, what did I just say? The average American has um, 40, makes $40,000 or less. So if you were making $35,000 and you had $42,000, your long-term emergency fund, $35,000, and your family operating account and your living expenses, you have $42,000 cash money in the bank you would have more money than 90% of Americans. And you ain't rich. You're not a millionaire. And this is one of the things that people do not understand about having cash on hand. Because once again, you know, I've seen all of this stuff and you need, and once again, uh, my money is not going to sit in the bank and I'll explain to you my plan for the money. 2016, 2017, I saw that first Porsche and I, I went in, I test drove it and I got really excited and I said, I'm getting me one of these. And in 2020, I bought my first Porsche. In 2020, I bought my second Porsche. And then in 2022, I got my first brand new Porsche that I ordered straight from the factory. And how did I get that? It took me three years to amp up my business where I had enough cash to go out and get this Porsche, right? So this is the, the new plan. I've got enough money in the bank to buy a house cash if I wanted to, right? But learning from those lessons, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna amp up my business and I'm gonna pay cash for my next house. And then I'm gonna take this cash and I'm gonna deploy it probably in real estate or something, I, I'm not really sure, but it's gonna be, and one of the things is like, let me go ahead and give you one of the plans that's running through my head. I take this money and buy real estate, sink the money in real estate, okay? And then pay cash for the real estate, then put a tenant in the real estate, because you know, parts of me are really ambivalent about this because that's one, just buy, some rentals around here, pay cash for them and have a tenant in there. And because the, the property is paid for in cash, I can be very, very dynamic with the rents. So let's say someone comes and looks at the house and I was like, if you sign a one year lease, um, this is what the rent's gonna be and the rent's not gonna go up in the second year. If you sign a two year lease, the rent's gonna stay the same. If you sign a three year release, the rent's going to say the same because here's the thing. The rent is like a dividend on my money. Okay. And because my money is in a piece of asset that's paid off, that's going to go up. My money will grow over time versus being denigrated with inflation. That's plan. Number one, plan. Number two is to do some exploration and to get into the hospitality industry, which is meaning short-term rentals, and maybe go ahead and get a bunch of houses in Florida, turn them all into Airbnbs. Like once again, I've thought about this, and actually have a staff, have someone in the office that people can call, and actually have a, a, a lawn, a maintenance crew, a maintenance crew in the lawn service, where they would go and cut the grass of all the properties, keep their eye on the properties, and once again, same thing, the real estate holds the value of the cash and the cash goes up with the real estate. And so that's the plan. I'm in no hurry to, 
like when I was in the car rental business, I could have spent a million dollars on cars if I wanted to, right? So glad I did not do that. That would have been another disaster in my opinion, because right now I have three cars that I got to sell. And that's a plan for the future. So once I go ahead and put my business, go ahead and buy my personal property. And then at this point, I will start looking at investment properties where I can go out and, you know, part of it is, I don't really know which one's going to win because I've got to look at the economy, but let's say I had 15 Airbnbs in Florida and I had a staff, an active staff where my customers, the people who, cause I'd be in the hospitality industry, that would be the first. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't charge a cleaning fee. I wouldn't have the least rules of any Airbnb ever because once again, I will go ahead and develop my own website and I would have staff and I would have people coming in from Airbnb and I will have people coming in from my own customers. So that's the plan. Because once again, the money is just not going to sit in the bank for 30 years. That, that, but because I have a financial device and I can turn it on because I'm in the process of turning it on and in the next two years, if I can get my financial device to do, let's say $500,000 per month, right? Get my financial advice to do that. So it's just going to be 6 million a year. Uh, at that point, I will go ahead and buy my house and then I will start deploying the capital of buying a rental property or maybe an apartment complex. Cause I got a lot, I got a lot to think about. I may get into an apartment complex. I have, um, like I said, I got a lot, the short term, the long term rentals of several houses, buying property in vacation spots, or maybe an apartment complex. But that's like two years in the future that I will get off that money and throw it into some type of investment. So that's my plan. And, you know, two years, I may lose a little bit on my cash. That's not like a big deal because here's the, the mindset. Have the cash in the bank, a, a significant sum of cash, and then have a business that creates very fast cash flow. And that's the position I think that you should be in if you want to become a significant investor. Um, the average real estate investor loses. So about 85 to 90% of the people who are messing around with short-term rentals are losing money. The people who are messing around with real estate are losing money because here's the thing. And there's a guy by the name of Pace Mobley who has like 1500 houses and these 1500 houses only make a hundred bucks per month. Each house makes a hundred bucks per month. But if you start doing the math, 10 houses make a thousand, a thousand houses make 10,000. So he's got like 15, to, he has a very large number of subject to rental houses. And because he has such a broad and big platform, he makes a lot of money from real estate because he has a lot. And once again, if you will look at it and you will see the more successful people in real estate, they always have a lot of properties. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, because, you know, two or three, now let's go ahead and talk about it like this. Two or three pieces of real estate that are paid off could be your retirement plan. If you could get four houses and just say regular houses that you can rent out for 2,500 bucks per month, and you got four, that's 10,000, that's $120,000 a year in passive income. And let's say after property taxes and expenses, you would, let's say you'll be at $90,000. That would work. But if you had four houses that were only cash flowing at 200, 200, which is 800 bucks a month, which is 9,600 bucks per year. You that's, that's kind of hard to retire, but let's say you had 50 houses that were cash flowing at $300 per month. 
that's 15,000 per month. See, the game changes because a lot of people do not have an understanding of finances and there's no understanding of the setup of financing. So once again, if you were to go ahead and take the free money management course, the link is in the description, and you were to follow the advice, in about a year and a half to two years, you should be sitting on thirty to $40,000 cash in the bank. And if you have that type of cash in the bank, you have more money than 90% of America. More money than 90% of America. So once again, hopefully you enjoyed this video because I showed you Warren Buffett, who we all know is a legitimate, legitimate millionaire, billionaire. And then we have Grant Cardone, who's a legitimate multimillionaire who Warren Buffett's money is making more money than Grant Cardone makes. And Grant Cardone has an educational company that does about 150,000, 150 million a year. And I don't have my calculator on me, but let's just go ahead and do some soft calculations. Warren Buffett has 130 billion. So let's say a billion and you got 4% on a billion, that would be like 40 million. And then if you got 4% on a hundred billion, that would be 400 million. So Warren Buffett's cash sitting in the bank makes more money than all of Grant Cardone's enterprises. Just money because he has so much of it. So once again, change your perspective, change your viewpoints on money because there are many, many people out here who are messing around with money in a very hazardous manner. All right, so once again, things are about to change. We're about to go into July this weekend, get into the Corporate Citizen Playbook ASAP on the payment plan or the one and done. And I will see you there because in July, we're gonna be cooking very, very hard. My name is Glennie Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.